Hi, I'm Richard Fairbanks. I'm president of Faro Editorial in New York City. We're a post-production house, and being a post-production house, we rely on our post-production tools. I've been asked to talk about the System 6000 today from TC Electronic, and I gotta tell you guys, the System 6000 is my absolute favorite toy, and has been for 10 years. We got the System 6000 to demo because we were looking for a CAT 43 from Dolby, and Dolby had discontinued the box. The box was unavailable. You couldn't find it anywhere for sale, and we were desperate to have one. And somebody said, oh, you know, this new thing by TC Electronic can do that. And we thought, well, <laughs> bring it on over. Steve brought one over, we started playing with it, and not only did it do that, it had four engines with fabulous reverb, fabulous processing, fabulous limiting, DSing. It was the box that we were missing. It was between, it, it got us out of Pro Tools onto our videotape machines with all the processing and all the smoothness and lack of distortion that we now know TC Electronic is famous for. We didn't know that then, but we learned really quick. Well, that was 10 years ago, and it's been a long 10 years between now and then, but every day in every session, I must tell you, and I know this sounds like a sales piece, but I use this box for every job that I do. Um, for mixing, which is our primary purpose here, we will set up a couple of engines for reverbs. We'll have a dialogue reverb. We'll have a sound effects reverb. Sometimes we'll use a music reverb, but uh, a lot of times I like to keep my engines. I'm very picky about what those engines get used for. Um, uh, so we'll have a couple of reverbs. I'll usually reserve a channel, uh, an engine for um, uh, final stereo or LTRT level control. We're doing a lot of broadcast work and we need to make sure that we hit specifications. Um, and and uh, peak level limiting is a very important specification and we always have to hit. And I absolutely rely on one of these engines. And it depends on the material, whether I'm gonna use a, a brick wall limiter or the standard MD3, or now I've really fallen in love with DXP algorithms. The dialog algorithms, particularly DXP dialog, is one of my favorites for program because it sort of allows me to boost the dialog in between the really loud stuff and the dialog just sort of takes a little extra tasty push up front and it really helps the clarity. And it's something that I've, I, I've uh, been playing with and absolutely it's now become my favorite uh, program, stereo program limiting. We use Unwrap probably in every mix now. What's happened is we are, as broadcast providers, we are expected to provide 5.1 mixes for everybody. Now we get mono dialogue from the set. We have mono and stereo sound effects. Occasionally, if we're lucky, we'll have uh, uh, a four channel sound effect from somewhere. But the music composers always deliver stereo stems or stereo mixes. They never deliver 5.1 or 4.0 or any other kind, it's always stereo. So I think for most of the surround mixing that we're doing, I am I reserve, now I talked about two channels, uh, uh, two, I talked about two engines for uh, dialogue reverb and sound effects reverb. One of the engines is for stereo processing. That fourth engine, that one is always set on unwrap. Unwrap is, is uh, another favorite around here. It's one of those very malleable sort of programs. I can take, I've used it for uh, full stereo mixes. In fact, I took, I took uh, uh, Stephen Sondheim's Passion uh, a, a mix that we did about maybe 15 years ago. It was a Broadway show and it was taped and it was beautifully mixed. It sounded great in stereo. And they came to us and said, so um, we want to release this on DVD and we'd really like for the little blue surround light to come on on people's players. How can we do that? So we took the stereo mix and we ran it into the System 6000 with Unwrap 
and there are some really nice, tasty little parameters that you can tweak. It's very important uh, when we're up mixing a stereo show to surround how we use the center channel because um, if it's just music, it sounds really great if everything's all around your head and the, the up mix, TC6000 up mix is terrific at doing that. But when dialogue comes in, if somebody's singing or if somebody's talking and there's still music and other sound effects, you really want that dialogue to stay anchored up at the center. So one of the best features in up mix is there's left right processing. It's a single control and it it's, I don't even know how the magic is really done, but it can take center channel information and it kind of sucks it out of left and right in the surrounds and diverts it to the center. And yet, other material stays in, in the left, right, and the surround channels. So if you use it judiciously and um, write it just a little bit where you where necessary you can really focus the dialogue into the center and keep everything else out where it belongs uh, and it's one of those controls that i'm constantly sort of adjusting as we go from section to section to section but it's such a powerful control and i think a lot of people don't know how to use it so they just leave it set to zero and you're really losing the benefit that they've programmed into the upmix algorithm so that's one of my favorite things. But when we use upmix just, uh, just for music upresing, up where the composer has delivered stereo music and we need to provide it as a surround mix, uh, oftentimes I'll go the other way. I will turn the process, left-right processing to zero, where it's not really pulling anything into the center. It's just, I think it just makes a mono mix and puts it in the center we just turn the center channel off. So we no longer have any center channel processing and we don't have any center channel music because we don't want it. We want our dialogue and things to, to be there. So uh, uh, upmix, as far as the center channel, is so malleable and so uh, adjustable uh, that it hasn't, it hasn't failed me yet. We do have to select uh, a particular type of processing, whether it's lateral or wide or uh, uh, narrow, very tight, depends on the program material. So we have to select that particular algorithm uh, for the particular kind of music that we have. And sometimes that'll change mid-show. It'll change as we crossfade from one cut to another. But up mix is probably on, I, I would say, 90% of the mixes that we do now. Got to tell you, I, I get really annoyed sometimes uh, with, with other mixers in this industry. They'll, they'll take their stereo music and they'll, they'll say, okay, we'll make a surround mix out of it. And they'll just kind of pan it part way back. It's lazy and it sounds flat. But if you use up mix, it, it generates, uh, um, not only does it pull out some ambience material that's already in the music and direct it toward the back, but it also gives some extra delay and a little bit of extra oomph to the surround channels and really gives a nice sense of space without kind of washing out the music. In broadcast, we've got to be concerned about how our surround mixes down mix to stereo. Um, I don't know if everyone's aware, but uh, in digital television, when these programs are being broadcast, these beautiful HD pictures, some people are listening in their little stereo speaker TV sets. Some people are listening on the, the mono TV hung, hanging under the kitchen ledge, and some people actually have a nice surround system in their living room. They're all hearing the exact same mix. It's just that it's being delivered either as six channels or down to two or down to one, and how it gets to two channels or one channel, that's being done in the television set or in the set-top box. So when we're mixing surround, we have to be positive that our mix is going to down mix and sound great in stereo and mono. One of the things about the unwrap algorithm is we can control what's in the surround channel by selecting uh, how the surrounds are processed. There's a lateral and a dorsal and a 
close algorithm and three or four others, uh, six, ten, uh, I don't know, however many they are. But we select the one that's appropriate for the music, and we just do that by auditioning and listening how the music down mixes, and then just you just sort of you know move the knob and select the algorithm until you get the one that sounds right. <clears throat> and if you can bounce between the original stereo mix to the down mixed, up mixed stereo mix, and the same qualities and the same inner harmonies have the same balances, then you've done your job right. And that's what we strive for every time.